have been asked, and what I'm going to start with, is how to fit hinges to boxes. The biggest problem people, I find, people have with fitting hinges to boxes is the way they fit them, they actually preload the box. Which means when the lid is closed and it doesn't have a clasp or hasp on it, it will pop up like that. So it'll be about that far from the top. So you've got this gap here. The reason for that is they've preloaded the hinges. So what I do is uh, get a piece of one or two pieces of veneer and masking tape and then wrap the masking tape once or maybe twice around the veneer and then I tape that to the back of the box like that. What that does, it gives me an air gap which allows the hinge to close because if not, when you pull a hinge down, it actually closes, but it only closes about that much. And that's what keeps the lid open. Whereas by putting that little piece of veneer behind it, it gives it an air gap so it can close properly. So I've got a block under there and that's just to support that. Got a little G clamp. If you've got uh, scissor clamps or spring-loaded clamps, yeah, use those. Just to hold it into place. You will need more substantial clamping when you're actually coming to do the hinges. Uh, we'll see how square it is. And there's no real point in using a square like this and squaring it up. The reason being, your box might not be square to start with. So what I do is use the flat edge and just hold it against the side. And if there is a bit of a difference, just equalize it up. Because we, when it comes to fitting the hinges, there are little things you can do. That can move the box around a bit, but we've got to get within the ballpark when we start. Now you've got to work it how far in you want the hinges to be. And I've already done a few here. And I've, I've lost the jig, so we'll just have to rejig. Now you can use one of these all the time, but it's my experience if you do, you'll end up changing the, the setting on it and it won't be the same as all the other ones. Okay. There we go. And that is just beautiful. Okay, so now that is my jig. So I'm going to mark that and write hinge on it. All right, so we put this up against the side of the box and with a knife, just mark along that face. Now, if I was doing a slightly thicker, thicker box, I wouldn't mark it right across because I'd actually house the hinge in, but there's about half a mil, or maybe a mil, between the um, front of the box and the end of the hinge. If I open this up, there you go. So really, to have that little piece of timber there, it's not worthwhile. That's why I'm going all the way through. Notice I only cut on the outside, I haven't marked the inside yet. And again, there's a reason for that. And the reason is, that's blunt. The reason is not all hinges are made the same. Doesn't matter if they're pressed or, you know, mass produced like these ones are, 
there will be slight variations in the castings. It's not a bad idea either. You can use the, the jig as a fence to hold your hinge up against and then just mark it. And what I always do is I mark right or left. I always mark mine on the top so I know that's it. As I'm looking at the box, this is the right hand side. So I will mark that with an R. So when I put them in the box, I can easily pick it up. R is the right hand one and the R goes to the top. You can work out whatever method you like. But I've now got a mark here for the width of that hinge and a mark there for the width of that hinge. The router bit is actually poking out half of the width of that barrel. If it's a little bit over, it doesn't really matter, but you don't want it um, any less or else you're going to have a hinge sitting proud. So if you have a look at, that's the test cut I did and it's just about halfway up that barrel. Separate these, you can take this off and we'll put it on again shortly. I might start on the inside just to see how we're going. If you make a mistake and it's on the inside, you can cover it up. You make a mistake and it's on the outside, you can't cover it up. I'm not going to take it right up to this line. I'm going to leave that there a little bit so I can cut it back with a chisel. Now, if you don't have uh, a trimmer or a small router, it doesn't matter. I just do that because it's convenient and I've got a lot to do. You can use uh, an old woman's tooth plane or a, a cordless router or whatever you want to call it. And with this, if I was doing this, I wouldn't take it at one pass. Just gently take it down to the depth that you need. And again, don't go into this area that you've actually marked because that's your your limits if you like what we can do with that now is come back with a chisel and clean it right out then come back in Never have your hand in front of the chisel because if it slips, you're going to be in all sorts of bother. And you put blood all over your job and it doesn't look good. You don't want to go deeper than your hinge cut because it'll show through on the back of the job, which isn't a good look. Do a test fit on the, the bottom one. So I've got the R going to the top. And that's what we're looking for, a nice fit low bat. So it's not sloppy and it's not super tight, it just sort of hangs in there. 